श्री अजय भट्ट मिनिस्टर ऑफ स्टेट फॉर डिफेंस श्री जनरल अली चौहान चीफ ऑफ डिफेंस स्टाफ एयर चीफ मार्शल वी के चौधरी चीफ ऑफ एयर स्टाफ एडमिरल आर हरि कुमार चीफ ऑफ नेवल स्टाफ जनरल मधुर पांडे चीफ ऑफ आर्मी स्टाफ श्री गर्धर अरमानी डिफेंस सेक्रेटरी श्री श्रीमती रश्का चौबे एफ एडीएस डिस्टिंग बिजनेस लीडर्स डिस्टिंग गेस्ट एंड सीनियर ऑफिसर्स फ्रेंड्स फ्रॉम मीडिया लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन ए वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल द डिग्नेटरी प्रेजेंट हियर डिस्टिंग डेलीगेट लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन इट इज अ मैटर ऑफ ग्रेट प्लेजर फॉर मी टू बी विद सच ए डिस्टिंग गैदरिंग ऑफ बिजनेस लीडर्स फ्रॉम अराउंड द वर्ल्ड Your presence here today is validation of our business-friendly approach, which has been appreciated by the business fraternity. On behalf of Ministry of Defence, Government of India, I extend a very hearty welcome to all of you. As all of us know, the contrast to a command economy model, where the government is directly and almost exclusively involved in the business of doing business, India. has adopted a market economy model i can say that it is broadly based on the principle of division of labor which is a major driver of efficiency in production of goods and services the government with its democratic legitimacy and the social mandate is performing the job of policy formulation facilitation and regulation on the other hand the responsibility from optimum utilization of society resources at the formal level is being discharged by the private entrepreneurs the government and the business work as partners in the task of development of the society please allow me to go even further lawyers and advocates in courts even when engaged in private practice are called officers of the court similarly we you may not be officers of the government but i can say that you all are officers of the society yes indeed the officers of society as ceos you are controlling and deploying a significant proportion of the resources of the society like manpower capital technology etc and produce things which are valuable for the well-being of the society therefore you act as officers of the society working for economic development india is the fifth largest economy in the world and marching on towards an exciting future we hope to become the third largest economy in the next 5 years the indian defense manufacturing industry is one of the key drivers of our galloping economy due to its strategic significance and the tremendous value generation potential government has ident identified it as one of the core sectors that will boost our self reliance mission brothers and sisters in the last few decades despite having a diversified defense industrial base the indian defense industry could not perform to its full potential due to several reasons of which the lack of a clear political vision in support of self reliance is an important one this led to an overwhelming dependence on imported weaponry a country of india's size and a global prominence cannot afford to rely on imported arms for such reliance will inevitably compromise the strategic autonomy of our country since 2014 the goal of atmanirbhar or self reliance has been vigorously pursued but we have not turned our back to the world rather we wish to engage the friendly countries as partners in the domain of defense and security based on the sharing of expertise and capabilities for a better future of the entire human kind under the rubric of make in india and make for the world initiatives we are declaring that india means business it is a party 
to which all of our friends are invited. Brothers and sisters, our aim is to nurture a vibrant and world-class defense manufacturing industry in the country. To realize this goal, our government has brought far-reaching reform measures in the last few years intended to create a business-friendly climate. These reform measures touch upon almost every aspect of our defense research and development, production and procurement policies. I am sure most of you would be aware of these reforms, but still, I would like to mention a few. We have simplified the industrial licensing process for facilitating entry of new and dynamic units. We have hiked the FDI cap to allow foreign OEMs to easily set up facilities in India. The government has opened up the government-owned trial and testing facilities are used by the private sector entities. To leverage the benefits of industrial clusters, we have launched two defense industrial corridors. Moreover, to promote a culture of research and development and innovation among the startup and small, small firms, to, two schemes, TDF and IDEX, have been put in place. I can go on and on, but I think the point has been made. Dear friends, our significantly, more significantly, we have simplified our defense procurement procedures to make them more transparent and easier to comprehend. Unlike the past, when import was the default option, endogenization is the mantra today. This is intended to provide a sort of demand assurance for the domestic units. The recently announced hike in the defense outlay in the union budget 2023 24 will further give boost to the demand generation for the defense industrial sector. I am confident that with all these initiatives, the defense and the aerospace industry will use these opportunities for expansion, both quantitatively and qualitatively so that their products can compete with the established gold defense and aerospace companies in the export market. Friends, it gives me immense satisfaction that our efforts have borne fruit. There is a growing enthusiasm and a greater participation of private players in the defense production over the last few years. However, we cannot afford to rest on our laurels. Much more needs to be done to make India a true defense manufacturing hub for the world. Friends, please allow me to share with you a major concern regarding our drive of self-reliance in defense manufacturing. We need to design, develop, and manufacture cutting-edge defense products using critical technologies here in India and not just remain an assembly workshop. The drive of indigenization needs to be honestly supported by all of us, business leaders included. As industry leaders, it becomes your responsibility to assist the Indian government in this national endeavor. Having said that, I also want to assure you that this government is open to new ideas and is committed to fully harness the energy entrepreneurial spirit and capability of our private sector partners in the area of defense production. You can come to me and freely discuss anything that you think merits our attention. We will take all possible steps to ensure that all roadblocks are removed and maximum possible facilitation is provided to your ventures. Friends, when I refer to you all as our partners, I mean it. Our partnership based on equality and mutual respect is reflected in the very name of this event, CEO's Round Table. Friends, let me dwell on the significance of this metaphorical round table. The evolution of shape of tables symbolizes 
द नेचर ऑफ हेरिकल पावर स्ट्रक्चर इन सोसाइटी ए नैरो रेक्टेंगुलर टेबल सिग्निफाइज ए ट्रेडिशनल हेयर की फ्लोइंग डाउन फ्रॉम द हेड ऑफ द टेबल एंड ओवल टेबल सिग्निफाइज सिग्निफाइज सम डिस्पर्शन ऑफ पावर एंड फाइनली एट द राउंड टेबल रिफ्लेक्टिंग डायलॉग एमंग इक्वल्स दो दो फिजिकली वी डू नॉट हैव ए राउंड टेबल हियर बट नॉमन क्लेचर ऑफ दिस इवेंट अंडर स्कोर्स द आइडिया दैट वी आर मीटिंग एज इक्वल पार्टनर्स brothers and sisters i am using brothers and sisters and friends both i would like to end my address by congratulating the officials of mod for organizing this event i am confident that ceo round table in aero india 2023 will show the seeds of successful new ventures and partnership boost investment expand indigenous manufacturing and bolster air sports and defense ecosystem in india thank you very much jai hind